Uh, George and then Matt, from an academic point of view and then from a legislative point of view, is there an argument to be made that $5 a gallon gas could be a good thing for the way transportation is viewed in Indiana? Yes, and that's, uh, that's an idea that's been kicked around for several years. Ever since we had the, the last big explosion in the price of fuel, uh, it does wonderfully get people's attention. It's like knowing you're gonna be hanged at midnight. You, you are aware of that fact. Um, yeah, it, it alerts people, and then when you start pre uh, presenting alternatives, people may be more careful in uh, looking through those alternatives. Should I ride on one of Marty's buses? Should I walk? Should I ride a bike or whatever? Those alternatives become more attractive. But it, it, that jolt doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt at all. How do you think, Matt, the tenor of transportation discussions at the State House would change if everybody was paying five bucks a gallon for gas? Well, it is an irony because it's terribly painful on people who don't have a lot of disposable income that can't absorb that additional cost. And so there are people out there that are really hurting on the lower end of the socioeconomic scale. But at the same time, from the kind of the broader public policy perspective, when people begin to say, I want to do something different where I don't have to pump all this expensive gas in my car, now you can build public support for other alternatives. And the economics, when you compare the cost of operating a first-class public transit system, uh, becomes much different than when gas was a dollar, dollar fifty a gallon. Well, we're with you, and then we'll come back down the line. Are there things the state could do, assuming people are not going to change their habits and that cars are going to be the way that people tend to travel? Are there changes the state could make to see that travel is either more economical or travel is made less of a burden on people if some of the other costs, like the cost of gasoline, continue to go up? Well, I think there just has to be a fundamental change in the approach to the issue. For example, you look at Indianapolis, and the legislature is willing to throw all kinds of money at the bottleneck of I-69 and 465 on the, on the northeast side of town. They'll add lanes and lanes and lanes. We'll be up to probably 25 lanes before we're done. <laughs> and every time you add two lanes, the studies show that you, you take care of the problem for a little while, and then more people are kind of attracted to the open lanes, and then they become clogged up, and you've got to add more. What would happen if you decided, why don't we use some of that money to actually get a rail line or, or some kind of express transit through that area? And maybe people would be willing to use that instead of taking and putting their car on, on those lanes. And I think you can have a better quality of life and actually a more efficient and economically viable transportation system if you take that approach. George, what would you like to see the state do? Uh, what Matt has suggested is good. Uh, I think we need to be more open to alternatives to, to highways. Uh, such things as make it, for instance, have park and ride lots. If you're, if you're in the Seattle area, you drive south out of Seattle, you'll, there are park and ride lots all over. Park your car here, take the bus on into uh, downtown Seattle. And they do the same thing with the, with the rail lines, too. Big parking lot, the state has money in it, local government has money in it. And so, Seattle's just invested a large amount of money in its, uh, its light rail right around right. the... Right. And the whole idea is intermodal. Take, uh, drive your car part of the way and get on the bus or the train and go the rest of the way. Uh, no one thing will probably sa satisfy everybody's needs. But uh, I think Seattle is a good example. I, I, I think it's, for some reason, uh, Indiana cities don't want to seem to go, go out and look at Portland or, or Seattle and others and say, maybe we get some good ideas, or San Diego or whatever, get some good ideas there. So, so uh, Marty, it sounds like George would advocate vacations for people <laughs> in Seattle. <laughs> what, uh, what would you have the state do? Well, you know, going through the screening is a hassle. So uh, I would rather drive five to 10 hours than take a flight these days. And that'll be $45 for that second bag. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, 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 the, and the cost of flying these days is, uh, is even more expensive than, than uh, the cost of the gas and time to get there. As I got to thinking about different modes of transportation for the show also, I thought about the private investment that's going on for space travel. Now, I wondered, what if you take that idea and you break it down to the local or the state level? Is there room or is it even feasible that there could be private investment, that you could have private bus companies that spring up or some Bill Cook type who says, I want to invest a billion dollars in a Bloomington-based or an Indianapolis-based rail system that just goes intra-city? Is this something that is possible or is it... Uh, cost prohibitive or are there other prohibitions that would stop something like this well, from happening? Well, it's possible, but when you do this, the figuring, you think, wait a minute, can I, make a, can I make money doing this? Providing any kind of transportation is expensive. We said, we already said that. Everything is very expensive. And can you carry enough passengers at a reasonable fare? People feel is a reasonable fare for them. 
to make a buck on it. Um, there's what, Megabus now, Marty? It's, at, uh, it's a private company and uh, you show up at a street corner and the bus comes and, and if you're lucky, it's only a dollar to go to Chicago or some, something like that. But so that's a private enterprise. Now they limit how many cheap tickets they have. Uh, and, and the airlines do the same thing in there with their, uh, what do they call it, mileage? It's a, what is the word I'm trying to find out? Anyhow, it's uh, th those mileage programs. That Frequent flyer miles? Frequent flyer, that's it. Let me ask each of you, uh, in, in turn, Marty, we'll start with you and we'll go down the line. Are there problems facing transportation in Indiana that have not perhaps gotten as much notice but are nonetheless underlying factors that stop transportation expansion and transportation feasibility in Indiana from being better than it is that, that people don't necessarily know about? Well, I think the uh, underlying problem is will it pay, the thought is will it pay for itself? We're the only government entity that is asked, you know, or expected to pay for ourselves. I've yet to see a library pay for itself. I've yet to see a police department pay for itself. So I think this underlying thought that because it was once private, it should, it should go back to that, that model. And that model has been dead for a long time. George, uh, underlying problems that you see that we need to deal with? This feeling that if it doesn't make a dollar, it's not worth it. Uh, that, that, now that's, that's true all over the country, not just in Indiana. But the willingness to um, explore different ideas. I, don't, I, I think the General Assembly can help in that. I think the local governments can help it. Let's look at all the possible options, the reasonable options, and then try to develop enough will that, okay, that looks like a good thing to do, let's go ahead and do it. All right, and Matt, in, in 30 seconds, from the General Assembly's point of view, what are some of the things that you hear that, that maybe you raise an eyebrow at that, that you know need to be solved? Well, there's an opportunity coming up because the legislature recognizes that because of the high cost of gas prices, people are getting more efficient vehicles, maybe going to electric cars and hybrids, and so the amount of money we're collecting from the gas tax is going down, and will probably keep going down, and that's the main fund there that keeps all these roads going. And so a study committee, it's going to last several years, has been created, a Transportation Infrastructure Study Committee, and it's going to try to quantify what exactly are the problems and challenges we're facing in transportation in Indiana and then what could be the solutions. And I think that's an opportunity maybe to change the mindset of the General Assembly about what makes sense going forward. All right. Well, my thanks to the three of you for being with us tonight. It's been enlightening for me, so thanks so much. Thanks to also the people who have watched and listened to this program tonight. Please do send us your questions or comments for next month's show to infocus at indiana.edu. You can also go to our website. That is indianapublicmedia.org slash infocus. Have a nice night. Production support for In Focus is provided by Hoosier Energy, providing electricity for Central and Southern Indiana electric cooperatives and their member customers. Information at HEPN.com and by viewers like you. Thank you.